I know I speak on behalf of the entire university community in expressing my delight that the Clifton Arts Festival Committee has decided to place its print and digital archives into the safekeeping of the UCD Library. The idea of Clifton Arts Festival, which started in 1977, I think Ishiguro came in 1990. He said then it was Ireland's best kept secret. One of the interesting things about the archive, I think, is the variety of material in it. So you've got a huge range of different disciplines um, represented from music to poetry, literature, visual arts. That combination, I think, is really valuable for us to have in a single archive because so many of our students work across subject areas, both at undergraduate level and also at, at postgraduate level. And so it's wonderful for them to see how artists and writers can work together and how all these different elements um, come together in a single event, in a single unit. The archive is made up of print and digital materials. It traces the origins of the festival and documents the extraordinary range and of artists, musicians, poets, writers and other performing artists who have participated in it from its very beginning to now. I suppose in a way when I always looked upon bringing a writer like Tony and Michael into the classroom or John McGahar and or whoever, you know, they captured from the beginning what Newman believed in. It was the living voice and the breathing face that first and best mediated knowledge to the young. What's hugely important to me uh, with the Arts Festival is the com what it has contributed to the community in Clifton, but more so what um, the community has contributed to it. It's great to be involved in a festival that has that ethos, that wants to expand the knowledge and the appreciation that people have of the arts in general. It's a time where students really enjoy and they love it and it is a real highlight for their year itself as well, to be honest. From the first time I went there, I think poetry has been com coming uh, to me and that's why I think I return. I I've, I've have a connection. I hear about it from kids who are children anymore that have come to me and said, Wow, thanks a lot for supporting the school. I, they don't know me from anybody, but it's, it's wonderful. It makes me feel like it's worth it, and I know it's worth it. I arrived here, I think, on the 1st of October 1974. I made my way out to the monastery <clears throat> and I met Brother Killian. I, he just was an extraordinary man. And I had a bottle of Rioja wine and I think we shared a bottle of wine that night. I was a bit embarrassed, first of all, I was just wondering would the man drink? He had no difficulty whatsoever in enjoying the Rioja wine. At that time, we only had prefabs, you, you know, we had no school. So it really was, um, you could say primitive, but there was a great old spirit and there was a great heart and people were very, very happy. Because we're moving into the new school in 1977, Brother Killian said, well, why not bring in Richard Murphy and do a reading? Now, Richard Murphy had read there earlier in 1971, I'd say, in, in what was the old hotel which was the school at the time. So in 76, 77, you had um, others arrived. I mean, we, we, we encouraged each other and people like Desmond Hogan, Neil Jordan, Sidney Bernard Smith. And they all arrived in that first year in 1977. The teachers at the time, Anne Marshall, Lorcan Gig, and Pat Garrity, brother Vivian, so many of them all were all bought in to the idea of Killian's idea of maybe having a festival, having readings, having workshops, having the children maybe experience the arts. We didn't know what we were doing, but at the same time we felt that by bringing people into the classroom, uh, we were giving children an, an experience uh, to meet somebody else, to hear something new, to hear something creative. And I remember there was Mary Mullen from Kilkenny Design, and Kilkenny Design was very, very important at the time. And it must be that previous year I was at the Kilkenny Arts Festival. Um, 
and seeing young musicians with their instruments over their backs walk up the town so confidently and I just said, will the day ever come when Clifton will have the same sight walking along the streets? And how true that was because every year we see a lot of musicians with the instruments and we see our own local kids here now with their instruments as they go from workshop to workshop or whatever. Brendan Flynn asked me um, would I go to the school um, and talk to the students in the secondary school about Shakespeare. Uh, he said pick a Shakespeare play, whatever you want, um, uh, preferably the one that's on the Leaving Cert course um, and just go in and give you an impression of the play and talk about it. I first came along uh, to Clifton in I think it was about 1989 and the festival was uh, running at that stage and it was in September. I remember. And then Brendan came along and asked me, would I man the caravan, you know, um, to help out? And I said I would. And from there, it just started to blossom. And I started getting involved then with um, organisational things insofar as the, uh, in relation to the parade and helping out with Machnus, as I had been involved with Machnus myself as well in Galway. Myself and Mary Donnelly, who's um, an artist here based in Connemara, um, originally from Loud. Um, we're toying around with various ideas of how we promote the visual arts and we come up with this idea of uh, starting an art trail within the town itself. What we did with that was to develop a trail, number it, okay, and uh, start to invite some artists to come in but also promoting local artists in particular. When I was going to school in the Clifton Community School, I got involved uh, in the Arts Festival just as helping out. And then as years progressed, I got more involved. I became a member of the committee. And then after that, I, my portfolio would have been Health and Safety Officer for the festival. But the festival wasn't just generating um, business into the town or anything like that, because it's Clifton Community Arts Festival. And this is very important that we emphasize that. One person I'd like to mention uh, in particular who was a um, pivotal, inspiring force for Clifton Arts Festival as well as for arts all over the world, but particularly here for Clifton uh, and was a loyal friend of Seamus Heaney, the late Seamus Heaney. Um, and the photograph you're looking at now uh, was taken uh, in 2009 when he gave a reading uh, in St. Joseph's Church, um, which is up the road here. Um, and the church was absolutely um, full. Now, 2009 was Seamus' 70th birthday, so he was in demand that year all over the world, in Harvard, in Oxford, and all over the place. But he made a point of coming down to Clifton in September um, of 2009 and giving a reading. Um, Seamus uh, inspired all writers. Uh, there was no hierarchy. Um, the Galway Writers Group, a group of um, aspiring poets, uh, were reading their works in the library, about 20 people on that uh, uh, in 2009, uh, and Seamus just came in to support them. So if you can imagine a group of uh, student writers reading their work and looking down and seeing the Nobel Laureate there, but Seamus was not there. Uh, Seamus's presence there was a, um, a presence of support. and. He did this uh, from 1978 when he first came here uh, and Seamus was writing to us and ringing us and talking to us up until shortly before he died. Um, equally important uh, is uh, his wife Mary, uh, Mary Heaney, who also um, uh, was at Seamus' side supporting him, uh, but in her own right uh, as a gifted writer and uh, editor. Um, has been a support and friend of the Clifton Arts Festival uh, again since 1978 and the Heaney family. Uh, their support, their inspiration, um, uh, while we are deeply saddened and will never forget Seamus, uh, but he put the wind in our sails um, and uh, he encouraged us um, to keep going. 
uh, and his famous poem, Keeping Going. Um, and when myself and Brendan Flynn were coming back from uh, his funeral in Balahi, um, we stopped in Knock and we said, we, we're going to keep going with this. Uh, Seamus would want us to keep going with this. Um, the schools program that he supported so well uh, would need, um, we need to keep going. I first came to uh, Clifton, um, in the, it would have been in the 90s I first came. I maybe visited once or twice, just as a reading poet, before uh, the 13th of October 1999, when the, really, the poet of the festival at the time was Michael Hartnett. And Michael, by, by that stage, in the last few years of his life, was um, qu quite ill. I remember that his last year in Clifton, Brendan Flynn, uh, because Michael was unable to read uh, in the class, he decided that he would just sit him in the door of the community college at nine in the morning. So every student, when they arrived, would step into the aura of a poet and then leave. And each of them came and left. And that was Brendan's belief in the power of poetry. It wasn't just the poem, it was the poet. And, uh, and when Michael died then, uh, I was brought in the following year and have been going back since. That's 2000 till, till now. Well, when someone new comes into the school, it animates them a bit more. They kind of see a different spectrum to it. The artists they come with, it's writers, um, poets, basket makers, weavers, take your pick. They do provide something different, something quite spontaneous, something live, with a lot of energy to it itself as well. And the students pick that up. The gym, which is kind of transformed from a, a functional basketball court size area, is transformed into a kind of a, um, a cathedral of sound and music, really, and art, where students get a chance to express how they feel as well and perform on stage, um, and also to, I suppose, develop a pride in the area too as well, because it is a community week. It is Clifton Community Arts Week, and the word community is an important part of it too itself as well. Well, it's my firm belief that children who are exposed to a variety of different types of learning will profit from that exposure. And so they can learn their histories and their maths and their sciences. But to have someone come into the school and talk to them about creating poetry or creating a piece of work on a canvas or singing and playing and dancing, and even, you know, fun stuff like stilt walking and um, they, you know, we have fitted feet who do these cr crazy, crazy, I think, things. But I've seen children here, and I've seen children in other venues where I'm active, who at one point, very shy, they don't really want to stand out. They want to be behind the scenes or not participate. And they don't have a high self-esteem or confidence. But once they start being encouraged by people who can do this, well with children, especially shy children, the confidence of the children is unbelievable. Certain students and their ability to reach, to grow, all came because stilt walking. And that's only one of the many, many exercises and, and uh, creative activities that they do for the stilt walking. And the fact that being able to participate, participate in the parade has given them such encouragement and a sense of their own identity and, uh, and belief and encouragement in, in being together with others and able to ask for help and receive help because once they get up in the still, they have to trust the teacher that they're going to kind of walk and then if they're going to fall, that there'll be somebody there to help them. The, the classroom experience is unequaled. For, for our students. We have poets that have been coming here for years now, like Tony Curtis, um, and he comes and he reads his poetry to the students and he interacts with the students and they discuss poetry at, at a, a, human, a human level and a human experience. The guitar is a great bridge sometimes between students and, um, and, and the poet, because I sing uh, sonnets, I, I'll, I'll sing Shakespeare, Shall I Compare Thee to a Summer's Day? You know, I'll sing it. Um, I'll sing Robert Frost, Stopping by Woods in a Snowy Evening. The other great thing is the, the mobile phone with Spotify. 
I can do Elizabeth Bishop for the older kids, and then I can turn on Spotify, and I can, I can instantly, with a little boombox, I can blast out uh, Elizabeth Bishop, Marianne Moore, uh, and I can tell them the stories. And this area would have been noted for its painters of landscape, you know, um, no matter who they were, you know, the Gerard Dillons and so on and so forth of this world, and a, a lot of them associated uh, with um, landscape painting. So when this exhibition went on, um, it was abstract art, and the number of people who came in, we were toying with the idea since of starting off, sure I could do that exhibition, you know, um, because it's lovely what to be, what is that, you know? So when I noticed these questions being asked, I said, right, okay, we'll get somebody to come in and start talking about what it is. And we get the artists to talk about what it is as well. And since then, I mean, we've continued with those types of talks and whatnot and elaborating and, and uh, uh, showing people, you know, how to hang an exhibition and so on and so forth and getting people down to help out with that type of thing. Um, that has expanded the, expanded the local skill base it is a, from an artist's point of view, and also expanded the knowledge and understanding of abstract art and how it impacts on you. And, um, and now it's, it's great to watch people when we have exhibitions, you know, coming in, you know, from the Arts Council, from IMA, uh, from uh, Patrick Murphy's collection, uh, from the RHA last year, just people walking in and just connecting a lot more strongly and with better understanding simply because of that process just of an educational, and it's just a subtle educational process just going on all the time. We get the children involved in street theatre and in um, poetry readings and all sorts of entertainment, music, everything like that. So it's very important that the children, not alone from the Clifton Community School, but all the schools from the surrounding area are brought in and we actually bring theatre to their schools as well, so it's good. It requires a wide range of people involved in providing all the infrastructure, the management, the seating arrangement, the sounds, the lighting, and all that comes together seamlessly and almost magically at times, but yet behind the scenes it can be cuckoo. But people on the front don't see it, to be honest. The fact that the festival has been going on for, for such a long period of time, you get a great sense of the evolution of the arts in Ireland uh, during that time. So in a sense it gives us a history of arts and culture uh, in the second half of the 20th century almost, you could say. That um, chain link uh, between Clifton community and environs and writers, artists, performers that has stretched over 40 years, um, as Shemasini said, the stepping stones uh, of 40 years of uh, uh, working in the arts that Brendan has fostered in Clifton has just inspired people, inspired me. Um, and the community aspect, the generosity of the community has inspired the artists. That is why they come back. When we're in the classroom, we're dealing with writers on the page, if you like, but it's, it's very important for them to see the arts in a performance context and for them to see, you know, poets performing their work, musicians in action, and for them to see that as something that happens in a particular cultural moment, and that's captured in that moment. I think that Bernard Sanders uh, this amazing uh, balletic, uh, silvet, fairy-like man who appears uh, on tiptoes at every event uh, and to look at him you wouldn't think he is that way but he is, um, he, he, he is just a special person, uh, a great friend and he has captured in the afterglow of memory the great images and the great sounds uh, and the great gift that Clifton Arts Festival and that inspirational man Brendan Flynn has given us and we look forward and we thank you here in UCD for giving this special archive a special home. Bermuda Market. When the festival is organised, the joys and the satisfaction is the music, it's the literature, it's what enters people's minds and what they take with them.